Okay, this is 12.7. It's our last section of the year. And today we're going to be talking about similar solids. So figures that are the same type with equal ratios, means their scale factor, of corresponding measures. Okay, so we're talking about their like radiuses being in proportion and their heights being in proportion. Um, these guys would be not similar. This, although this is in proportion, that changed shape or changed size. This did not at all. The height stayed the exact same. So it's kind of like um, being in a Word document and grabbing the corner and then enlarging it. So everything about it has got to change size. So the first example we have says is it is either rectangular prism A or B similar to this guy. And the way that you test similar is just to make sure that all of the sides that match up have the same ratio. So for these two, it's going to be the 4 and the 8, the 2 and the 4, and the 2 and the 2. So this is a half, this is a half, but this is one. So these guys are not similar. Trying this one, this is four and six, two and three, and two and three. And four over six actually reduces to two and three, and then all of them are the same. So B is the one that is similar. As long as when you match up the sides, the ratio stays the same for all of them, then they are considered to be similar figures. On the back, one more. Are the solids similar? So you're still checking to see if their scale factors or their measures that match up, the ones that correspond to each other, are the same. So the 5 goes with the 10. And it doesn't matter which order you do this in. So if you did 10 over 5, that's totally fine. And the other one is 10 to 15. And so what you need to do is just do a little simplifying to make sure that they are the same. So I'm going to divide that. That's a half. And then over here, if I divide by 5, I get 2 thirds. So these guys are not the same. They're not similar. We've done a lot with similar figures. We've done a lot with scale factor, ratio of perimeters, and that type of thing. And now we're tacking on ratio of volumes. So to go way back using two different shapes, the scale factor was one side to another, A to B. And I'm going to change it to an A. I think that says an R, but you can hardly see it. So we'll just say A to B. When you do ratio of perimeters, it was the exact same as scale factor. So if scale factor was 3 to 4, then ratio of perimeters was 3 to 4. Ratio of areas was those guys squared, so a squared and b squared, which would be 3 squared, 9, and 4 squared, 16. Ratio of volumes, if you've kind of caught on to the pattern here, volumes are cubed, and so these guys are going to be cubed. So it'll be 3 cubed, which is 81, and then 4 cubed, which is, nope, sorry, 3 cubed is 27. Sorry, struggle there. And 4 cubed is 64. So scale factor, ratio of perimeters, same thing. Ratio of areas is squared. Ratio of volumes is cubed. So we'll do a couple of examples using that kind of information. So the cans shown are similar. That's key. i got to have that word. With a scale factor of 87 to 100. So I'm going to go SF, 87 to 100. Find the surface area and volume of the larger can. Um, and they gave me some surface area and volume. That's for the smaller can. Since we're going after the larger one, those numbers are for the smaller shape. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So to do ratio of areas, we'll need to be talking about squaring our scale factor. And to do volumes, we'll have to talk about cubing our scale factor. So the first thing we want to do is reduce 87 over 100 as far as it can go. Um, and actually that's as far as it can go. I just did it in my calculator and it's still 87 over 100. So that's as far as it can go. So our ratio of areas will square those. So I'd have 87 squared and 100 squared. And so for us to find the surface area, I'm just going to take our 51.84. And that's for the smaller can. And right now we're going small to big. So I'm going to put the 51.84 on top and we'll put an X on the bottom. So doing a little cross multiplying, I've got 100 squared times 51.84, and then we're going to divide by 87 squared. And I find out that the surface area of the larger shape is 68.49 um, inches squared. So that's the first one. To do volumes, we're going to take our scale factor and cube it. So 87 cubed over 100 cubed. Still small to big, so I'm going to take my small 28.27, put that on top, X goes on the bottom because we're finding the volume of the larger um, can. So 28.27 times 100 cubed. And we're going to divide by 87 cubed. 
and I get for volume about 42.93 inches cubed. Just making sure that both of these guys are bigger than the smaller can. So 68 is bigger than 51 and 42 is bigger than 28. So hopefully chances are I did it right. One more example, still doing the similar stuff. The pyramids are similar. Pyramid P has a volume of 1,000 inches cubed. And Pyramid Q has a volume of 216 inches cubed. And they want us to find the scale factor. So what we are talking about is trying to go all the way back to scale factor if I get ratio of volumes way over here. So I know my ratio of volumes um, is going to be 1,000 and 216. They're asking me to find the scale factor from P to Q, so they want me to go big to small. So I'm going to go 1,000 over 216. And what we're going to do is reduce as much as possible. And then we are going to cube root these because right now our volumes are cubed. And so in order to undo that, we are going to cube root. Um, sorry, just pause while I use my calculator here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take the cubed root of 1,000. Oops. On my calculator, I just go down to the math 3 button or math 4 button, and that's my cubed root of 1,000. If you have this type of calculator, hold on, this guy, the way that you're going to do a cubed root is you're going to type in a 3, oops, and then we're going to hit this blue button right here, which has an X along with a root, and that's going to put the 3 right where that X is so that I can do the cubed root of 1,000, which is 10. So taking the cubed root of both of these guys, I get 10 over and the cubed root of 216, whoops, cubed root of 216 is 6. And so for scale factor, although you can leave me 10 to 6, it is preferable if you reduce. So dividing each of those by 2, I would get 5 over 3. So that is my scale factor in inches. So today's biggest trouble for kids, and the same as it was in chapter 11, is if you are going to solve for a side... You need to use side, length, width, scale, factor. And if you're going to do area, you need to make sure you're using ratio of areas. And if you're going to do volumes, you need to make sure you're doing ratio of volumes. I highly suggest you kind of list these out each time. I got my scale factor, I got my ratio of areas, I got my ratio of volumes. To make sure you're using the right number each time.